Hey everyone, I'm Sam from BioCosplay. Today I'm going to show you how to make patterns for foam out of aluminum foil and duct tape. This is one of my favorite ways to go about making patterns for foam. I think it's really good for doing organic shapes, like this treasure goblin head. I'm going to try to make a cubone skull. I think that would be pretty cute. So usually I start by just getting a big piece of foil, and then you want to loosely crumple up the foil so it still has room to compress after you've crumpled it. So here's a very loose crumple. If I smushed it, it would smush down more. We want that for later so you can kind of shape it and if you just compact it as much as it'll go, then you have nowhere to go from there. So this Cubone skull, he's kind of got like a big blob in the back and then it's going to narrow down in the front and then a little blob on the front. It kind of helps to, you know, separate your shapes. The foil will kind of hold together on its own for the most part. Um, eventually we will start having to use the duct tape to get other bits to stick together. I think that's a pretty good size to start with for the back. Keep the snoot going and then kind of swoop back up for his front little snoot. There's our rough shape to start with and we can take it from there. I don't want this to be super big. You know, whatever you're making, you can make it whatever size you want. If you're trying to make a helmet, you can use like a styrofoam head and bulk it up to your head shape. If you want to make a gauntlet, you can, you know, just do it on your arm or if you have like a duct tape a dummy for your arm, you can do that. You know, any shape you want to do, you can do out of the aluminum foil and duct tape. So I like where this is at. This isn't connected to this, so this is where I'm going to start using the duct tape. And to start by sticking one piece to another piece, I like to roll up the duct tape. And then just stick it together like so. That way we know it's not going to flap apart when I start putting the duct tape everywhere else or it's not going to shift. I'm going to start by not putting a ton of tape everywhere. Um, just enough to make sure it's going to hold together and then we'll go back to the foil. I think his snoot at the front's getting a little too narrow compared to the back so I'm going to add a little bit more mass to the snoot. For this one I'm just going to fold a piece of aluminum over on itself and just kind of wrap the front here just to give it a little bit more bulk. If you like the general shape of what you have, but you want it a little bit bigger, you can just wrap it in more foil. Um, it doesn't always have to be the big, loosely crinkled chunks. Uh, if you've crinkled up a piece of foil and you're not loving the way it's fitting with what you have, you can just toss it aside, get another piece, and try again. I want to refine this shape a bit more to have a better overall base to work with. The nose right here comes out a little too far, so I'm going to try to mash that in. I'm just going to try to round out the head a little more. Um, for a lot of this, I use just my scissors, and I just use the handle of it and kind of mash that way. Uh, I just like these scissors because it's got a round part that I can hammer in spots and a relatively flat part. So for the nose here, I'm going to try to flatten this. Or you can also just use your fingers, that works as well. In the back of the skull overall, I'm just kind of gently tamping it down to get rid of any of the points from the, that the foil has formed, I'm trying to round this out more. This is also when you'll find out if more places need tape, because then you, when you're hammering and smushing things around, it's going to loosen bits. And you can see it's a little jiggly in spots. When I'm laying the tape, I want to do it kind of as gently as I can while still pulling the rest of the foil into it. Because if you stick the tape and then just like yank on it, it's going to mash the foil in right where the tape is. And we don't want that. You just want it on there gently enough to hold what you have in place without deforming it. Currently, I'm trying to make sure it has an overall shape and scale that I like. Eventually, I will pick a side that I like better than the other side. I'll kind of split this down the middle and primarily just work on one side because we only need one side of the, the skull to make the pattern. We'll just mirror the pattern later. That really depends on what you're working with. If the thing you're making has symmetrical sides, you can just pick one side mostly to work on. You do want to do some work on the other side even if it's not going to be the side you end up using for the pattern, just so you know how big is the thing going to be. Because if you're, if you're just working on one side and it ends up being like this wide, then once you put the pattern together, your, your skull is only going to be this big instead of this big. Another thing you want to do is try to fill any large gaps that are going to cause issues. So like this gap right here, I can fit like a whole thumb in. 
we're gonna wanna fill that. Because if we put something on top of it and then try to shape that thing, it's gonna fall in there and distort what you're trying to make. For that, we can just get a little piece of foil. And kinda stick that in there. We try to kinda taper the edges to blend it in where it's gonna go. Because if you just slap a piece of foil in there, you can end up with a lump and you don't want that. Now I'm gonna need to try to put these little winged bits that he's got coming off the side right by his eye. First, I gotta figure out where's his eye gonna go. I'm just gonna take a Sharpie or whatever marker and try to roughly sketch where that is. If you want to, you can put a piece of duct tape wherever you're gonna try to draw in your details for replacement. Whatever helps you determine where things are gonna go in your next step here. For this, I just fold it over the foil twice. This is more of a flatter shape. There's some rough edges here where it didn't fold great. I'm just gonna fold those in as well and then smush down one end so it's pretty flat. On the other end, it's pretty floofed up and bulky. And then try to see if, if I can use this to get the start of that shape. I'm gonna go ahead and tape that on. If I end up not liking it, I can just pull it off and try something else. So then, for this cheek at least, this kind of swoops down. I'm just gonna take the scissors and just kind of cut that swoop in. I'm gonna wrap it in some foil since it's taped down now and try to blend it into the rest a little bit better. Just kind of pinching and tucking with my fingers as I put this on. Don't be afraid to make changes to what you've got. You can always put it back how it was, usually. We won't know if we don't try changing it. Also, don't be super worried with getting what you're making, like a one-to-one, -one, super accurate recreation of what you're going for, if that's not what you want. If you want to make like a stylized Cubone skull that has your own twist on it, that's fine. As long as at a glance it evokes whatever the thing you're making, then it was a success. It doesn't have to be, you know, exactly like someone else's whatever they made. But if you want to make it 100% accurate to whatever your source material is or whatever you're aiming for, go for that. That's fine too. I'm going to go ahead and outline this picture with silver sharpie because it's got a black background. Sometimes just like tracing the shape and acknowledging what's there, for me at least, helps to be like, okay, this is what this shape kind of looks like. This is what this shape will feel like when I'm making it. That kind of helps me a little bit. If you can't tell at this point, I've all but abandoned this side of the skull that's just there for with reference at this point i might fill in this but this is the side i'm primarily going to be working on from here on out and this cuts back up this way usually if i cut a section that has a lot of layers of foil i'm almost always going to want to put tape over it because it can make really sharp sections on the foil and you don't want to accidentally cut yourself At this point, I've got most of the rough shapes. This could use a little more shaping, but I'm gonna start putting duct tape on all the spots that I do like. Um, for this steep curve, I'm gonna use just a long, thin strip of duct tape. In some round sections, you'll want a bigger piece, but putting it on this way might not fit great. It might crinkle, so if you put the corner where the steepest part of your curve is, that'll help it fit a little bit better. So how I'm determining is where I'm putting the tape right now is Wherever I think I like that shape, I want to finalize that shape and put a piece of tape on it. If I think it still needs a little bit of work, I leave it as bare foil so that I can work with a little more without the tape getting in the way. If you have tape and foil overlapping, it makes things a little bit harder for cutting off your pattern later. This section, I do want it to be tucked in where the tape is a little, so I am going to pull on it there just to get that harsh line right there. All right, now that I'm happy where it's at and I've got it covered with duct tape, I'm going to find where my center line on it is. I'm going to take this fabric measuring tape and kind of drape it down roughly where I think the center of the skull is. I'm going to draw on a line with my Sharpie. Then for the final layer before the pattern, I like to put masking tape over it. I think it's easier to cut off the masking tape and lay it down on paper than it is to cut off the duct tape. A lot of times with the duct tape, you'll pull off 
a lot of foil. So this step isn't 100% necessary, but it's up to you. I've got everything covered in masking tape. Now it's time to go ahead and draw on our pattern. I'm gonna draw in the eye again. So if you have any like little detail sections that you want to show up in the final pattern, go ahead and draw those on. Now when determining where the pattern lines are gonna be, a good place to start is, are there any lines built into what you're making that could be good seam lines? So on Cubone here, he's already got this line on this part sticking out. You know, he's got two lines there, one line coming down from his nose. Those can be built into our pattern already. We won't have to worry about trying to carve those in later or whatever. The rest we're going to have to figure out ourselves. I like to go around the edge and mark out where the edge of, of the pattern is going to be. So you know the bottom here, we don't need any of this for the final pattern. I'll just go around the perimeter for when I peel the tape off, it might not peel perfectly on the edge there and I'll, I'll want to know later that hey, this is where the pattern ends. Oh, another thing you want to do, you want to do registration marks for putting it back together. So just little lines that say, hey, put me back together here. I'll go around and do that on everything. Sometimes I go back and do it later. Then we want to go through and determine what's going to be best for the foam to lay flat. This this can take some time to figure out if you're first getting into pattern making. Like how am I gonna get this shape to lay flat, right? This is like a super steep curve. So basically we just wanna go onto our round shapes and figure out where's kind of the peak of the roundness. So that's kind of like right there is where this roundness kind of peaks somewhere in here. So that can be a line. These don't have to be straight lines. So we'll bring this up, bring it around here, this. And then I'm kind of visualizing like where in here is going to lay flat. And I think like right to there it'll lay flat anymore. It might cause some difficulties. So we'll kind of bring it like this. And then down in here like that. Then for the front, I'm going to bow it back out a smidge. And then again on the front here, where's kind of the peak of this roundness? It's kind of like right in the center here. So we'll just bring that straight down after that. Or, you know, to the corner of this, this pointy bit on the front, we'll say. That can be where the line can end. So that can be a little bit confusing, you know, knowing where to put your seam lines. That takes some practice for sure. Will this seam be perfect? Maybe not. Sometimes with round shapes or complex shapes like this, it gets kind of funky. So I think here I kind of bowed it in. I might make that less extreme even. Like this actually. Let's go through, put the registration marks on that. I kind of put on like, like an inch apart. More complex sections, maybe closer, like half an inch apart. Um, I'm gonna bring this line around the side up here just so I know this is kind of the, the peak edge here. I think I can bring this all the way up around the horn. Maybe even cut the horn off itself. Bring that up, that line up to the horn there. So this is cut out. That's going to be the horn. And we want it to be rounded at the top. And two pieces of foam glued together isn't really going to round it. I think we need to make this in four pieces. Generally for horns, I'll do them in four sections. Um, this one's tiny, so it may seem like it doesn't need it. I'm going to do it just in case. And then again, I'm going to bring this back, separate the horn from everything else. Come around here, continue separating this horn. And now it's kind of isolated from the rest of the pattern for when we put it back together. I think actually for this piece, I'm just going to make that its own little thing. And then this could actually just be one piece of foam that comes off this way. And then this piece of foam will just glue it flat to there. These are just some scrap pieces. But like this section can come off this way. And then when this comes around the back here, it can just glue like this. And then we can round that out with a Dremel. That might make this a little bit more simple. The only thing left is to determine, do we want this tooth to be its own section? Because it bows out a smidge there. See, it bows out just a little bit. 
this I think is gonna lay relatively flat on its own. Uh, I might have some issues right here. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and nip that off right there where I think the issues might happen. So this whole piece here has a little relief cut already so that can splay out on its own. So I don't need to make this a separate piece, but do I wanna make it a separate piece just so the lump out is baked into the pattern? Maybe, I don't think I need to because I can just um, heat that up with a heat gun later, smush it out with my finger and make that shape. I think I'm gonna leave it. If you wanna do something like that, I think basically we just go around, trace the perimeter of the section like that. And basically then when you put it on, bevel the edges in a way that would make it that way. I'm gonna leave this traced though, so I know later I can mark, hey, this is where I need to smush this out. That's basically what our pattern looks like. Remember to put registration marks everywhere, and then we want to label it. You can either do different letters or numbers, whatever's gonna help you remember where everything goes. Don't forget to put them on your center strip as well. Even though the center strip doesn't have something on the other side currently, it will when you put it together because we're gonna mirror it. Then for these faces that touch each other I'll put A here and A here that way I know we know the B's go together so there's no like hard fast rules on how you label your things just whatever's gonna help you remember so if you got all your lines on there you've got it labeled in a way that you know how to put it back together later you've got your registration marks so you know where everything lines up now we can start cutting it off for this i use an exacto knife and i just cut along all the lines just be careful you don't cut yourself so slow this is kind of tedious it takes a while uh, you can also use a box cutter if you have that if you prefer to use that now that all the seams are cut, we're gonna peel off all the tape and try to put it down on some paper. I have a big roll of paper from the hardware store. It's just like a paper drop cloth, I think, that I'm gonna use. Um, you could use printer paper or whatever paper you have that's big enough to fit your pattern. I'm just gonna start up here at the horns and try to peel it off. A lot of the times if you've cut all the way through your tape and everything, the foil will come off too. That's okay. Just separate your masking tape from the duct tape. And then you want to put it on the paper and try to get it as smooth as possible. Now, a lot of times I'll use the front of the scissors and just kind of like scrape it against it to make sure it goes down pretty flat. I'm just going to repeat that for the rest of the pattern. Sometimes you'll have instances where you pull off the tape and it separates from the rest of the tape. What you want to do then is try to put it back together as best you can. Then mark where it's coming apart, just in case it comes apart again. And then try to come at it from the other side so you can get it all at once. Sometimes this happens if you just didn't overlap the tape enough. The tape just slips out from one end. Got it off. I'm going to try to stick that seam down first where it was coming apart. Here I'm having some sections where a piece of tape is still sticking down and I'm just going under it with the blade of my utility knife and lifting it up. Some sections you'll have like this where it's curled up pretty far and it won't want to go down. For that you just have to keep working at it. If it definitely won't go down you might need to cut another line to let it splay out. Most of the time when I do patterns those I can kind of smoosh out though. Now that everything's on paper, I like to go through and clean up any raggedy edges with a sharpie. Then it's time to cut it out. You can either use scissors or an X-Acto knife, whatever you're comfortable with cutting your patterns out with. Also, don't forget to go through and cut out all your little registration marks. I just do a little triangle right on the line I drew. Alright, now that you've got your pattern cut out, you're ready to transfer it to foam. I'll show you that and how to assemble it in the next video. If you use this tutorial to make a pattern yourself and you want me to see it, tag me on social media at BioCosplay. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.